What a beautiful offer we have from Jesus. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. We should have great comfort in the promise that Jesus has for us. When we feel overwhelmed, anxious, tired, worried, frustrated, we have a place to go, and that is Christ. Now, in the original context of the gospel, Jesus was referring to the Pharisees and the scribes as the wise and learned, the ones who had taken the law of Moses and made it burdensome with their legalisms. These and others had not accepted the good news of Jesus, even after seeing his and his disciples' good works. They had closed their minds, not willing to learn and grow. Now, Jesus' irony is that those who are like children, the little ones, they are willing to learn and grow and accept this offer, whilst they that know better or think they do reject it. We see this all around us today, and so many in our world and more and more people in our country are rejecting Jesus. We are enlightened. We know what is best for us. We are caught up in this culture of relativism where it's all about ourselves and where the truth is twisted to fit an agenda. Many times I think that agenda is unknown to the person it influences the most. We allow others to think for us. We are swayed by the loudest voice. We get caught up in current events. We get scared and we lose the ability of rational thought. We observe what is happening around us and we feel out of control. And we start to believe in the narrative of that agenda and we jump to conclusions. We have forgotten what it means to have a civil discussion, civil debate, to listen to opposing views and calmly discuss. We do not need to agree, but we shall at least try to understand. Now here's the truth. Jesus does not care what our skin pigmentation is. Jesus does not care about our political affiliation. Jesus does not care where we were born or how much money we have in the bank. He cares about what is in our heart in our soul? What are our thoughts? How do we treat other people? Do we show compassion to others and forgive others? By our baptism, we are all children of God, period. And we need to act like it. Come to me, all who you labor and burden. This invitation is for everyone to come to me. My heart aches right now. The weight of the world rests heavy on my soul. I'm greatly disturbed by what I see happening around us. I think we're slightly isolated here in Allen, Texas from seeing the worst of what is in the hearts of men and women, but we see it daily in the news and our social media feeds. The fear of the pandemic of COVID-19, politics, civil and racial unrest, riots, the free-for-all, anarchy. I fear we may have lost our collective minds. Jesus and his message of nonviolence and peace is rejected more and more every day. Christ died on the cross to forgive us of our sins and open up the gates of heaven for us for our salvation. He left us with the greatest commandment, Love one another as I have loved you. Why do we reject that commandment? Why are we not willing to love others? Not just our family and our friends, although sometimes that can be difficult, but even those that we disagree with. Bishop Barron says that love is actively willing the good of the other. Jesus is the ultimate example of love compassion, and equality. And he says, come to me. Just prior to his passion, Jesus told his disciples, have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. 
Jesus never promised that life would not be difficult, but we ought not to get caught up in it. As Christians, we need to go to our Lord in prayer and ask him to fill us with his grace, to feel true compassion for those who suffer the immeasurable evil of sin and for those who are far from God, to be willing to pray for others that they may feel the love of Christ within their hearts. This weekend, today, as a matter of fact, is the birthday of our great nation, July the 4th, when in the year 1776, 56 men signed the Declaration of Independence to start a country called the United States of America. Many of these men died for their cause, A lot of others lost everything they had, family, homes, land. In their declaration, they stated, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is for everyone. Even our founding fathers knew that life was going to be difficult at times, that there would be great labor and burdens on our journey through life. However, they set a foundation that although seems crumbling around us, we can continue to build upon today. Our country has had its problems, but we should have hope that we can work through these issues. We can do better. We have to do better. It is the diversity of people and cultures that make this nation what it is. You've heard the term that we are a melting pot, both the nation and our church. I saw this quote on Facebook the other day, and it struck a nerve with me. I believe it was a gentleman by the name of David French that said this. Humans need forgiveness like we need oxygen. An intolerant nation is a miserable and divided nation. Only grace can light the trail out of the darkness. We certainly are miserable and divided right now. We need to bring Christ back into the equation, back into our lives. We need to take our exhaustion, take our anxiety, take our worries to him and accept his offer of grace and mercy into our heart. And only then, when we do that, can we turn around and offer that same mercy and grace and forgiveness to others. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest.